Welcome, welcome to my channel. This is Clarity Empress, the Empress of Clarity. And I'm here to do another collective energy reading for you and your other per in your person, not your other person. Excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> but yes, please remember to like, click, share, and subscribe to my channel. Um, comment in the comment section. Let me know if it resonates with you. Spirit is putting it on my heart right now to speak upon unconditional love. What it looks like. And based on my readings and what I'm gathering, right? So, you know, after some deliberation with a friend, I keep the same theme comes up in, a, in almost every reading. That there's no communication between you and your person, right? And um, there ain't no communication. There's a quiet and deep contemplation on both sides about the union and what it is and what it's not. And um, Spirit want me to talk a little bit about unconditional love. So in unconditional love, what it is and what it isn't, you know, like, Unconditional love is when you genuinely love someone. You don't even gotta like them. You can have unconditional love for your parent or your sibling or your best friend, cousin, you know, aunt, uncle, uh, and love interests, right? Um, unconditional love means I simply just love you, right? And it doesn't require payment. It doesn't require for you to do anything for me. It doesn't require us to be in union. It just simply is unconditional love. I mean, it, there's no requirements for me to love you as another human being. You didn't have to be born a certain way, look a certain way, nothing, right? But <clears throat> sometimes, though, people who have not been taught what real love or unconditional love is, take that for granted because they don't know better. They didn't experience better and they fumble the bag. They fumble it big time because they will take your kindness, your sweetness, your trust for granted. And they will play with that trust and they will play with that kindness and that sweetness until it disappears. What I've been learning um, through the interactions of others and my own personal experience is that I can't feed into anything that's not real love. I can't give it too much attention if it's not real love. If I'm not nurturing it, um, growing it, I don't care if it's a thing like my business or, you know, my children or, um, you know, my house, my car, whatever it is, I have to nurture it. I have to pour into it, right? And that is the same thing with relationships. You got to pour into it. But if I'm pouring into something and it's bleeding me dry, I have to make a decision. We had a car mishap. Poured a lot of energy into the car to keep it going. The car was 20 years old. It couldn't go anymore. And the, what happened was, took it to the dealer for a diagnostic and they said, yeah, we don't suggest you drive it. And um, to replace the engine is more than the value of the car. So we had to let it go. We had to replace it. We had to do something different. And that's similar to relationships in that if a relationship run its course and, and nothing works, and it's not suggested that you keep going in it, <clears throat> you have to do something different. Doing the same thing over and over again does not get you a different result, no matter what it is that you're pouring into. And even if you're the one, let's just say you're the one pouring all the energy, the gas, the oil, the everything into the car, but the car is not driving, going anywhere, or it's dangerous to be on the road, you, you can't keep doing that. Like that makes no sense, right? They said the definition of insanity, oh, that's the same, right? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing 
over and over again expecting a different result. Over, doing something over and over again does not equate to unconditional love. It equates to running yourself ragged. It, it equates to poor mental health. What is good for you is when something can deliver and give you back what you put into it. When you can when 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 something is working without one person forcing it to. And so in in love situations, whether they're, you know, required or unrequited, if they were, you know, there's love there, you you have to make a decision at some point. How much will you take? How much will you pour into it? How much will you hold on to it? And if if it's meant for you, like they say, if something is meant for you and you let it go, it'll return, right? That's what these readings tend to be about. If it's meant for you, it will return for you. But there's a big but there because you still have to use discernment. You still have to confirm with your intuition, with your spirit, with, you know, your spirit guides, if in fact this repeat will be different. If there's in fact a change, that this is not a recycle, this is not, um, you know, you're going in circles and you're going around the clock over and over again doing the same thing. So each time, each person, each scenario is going to be different. We got to learn boundaries, y'all. Boundaries keep us from repeating a lot of you know, go. it keeps us from ignoring the red flags where we have a boundary and you feel like somebody crossed your boundary. You realize, wait a minute, or that you've crossed your own boundary. You know what I mean? Because the boundaries are for you. You don't have to communicate with somebody just because you love them. You don't, you don't have to uh, love hard. That's another statement a friend of mine recently made and a client made. And I used to say that. I love hard. But love is not supposed to be hard, y'all. You're not supposed to constantly struggle. Are we going to have growing pains in life? Yes. Are we going to have difficulties? Yes. But you're not supposed to love hard. Loving shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't. Loving someone sh does not have to hurt. And if you grew up that way, I'm so sorry that that was your experience. But love is not supposed to hurt. All right, Spirit, just put that on my heart to tell y'all. So whoever listened to that, you know, I hope it resonates with you. But unconditional love does not automatically mean someone can enter your life or be a part of your life. You can love them from a distance if they, if they make you feel like you're loving hard. You know what I mean? Because they have to pull their weight to make it to make it ease. That means in order for it to flow, they have to do their part. Spirit, give me a message for my collective. Capricorn energy. Capricorn energy is also in the tarot is the, is the devil. But Capricorns are no also known as the CEO of the Zodiac. They are the leaders. They are ambition. They are the managers. They know how to run things. Let's see what's on the back. Yeah, loyals. Speaking up. That's the other side. Truth. Spirit said you got to live in your truth, your purpose, your goals, your dreams. You got to focus on living in your truth. And any person in your life that you accept as, as somebody being part of your life should understand, respect your truth also and be truthful with you, right? The goal in life when you grow old with people is to be living in your north node, be focusing on the goals, you know, what you need, what you came on this planet to learn. What did you come on this planet to contribute? Crossroads. You know, some people haven't figured that out yet. And they're still in, in, a, in a decision mode. Uh, which way do I go? Left, right, up, down. Do I take the blue pill or do I take the red pill? 
you know, I said many of us, um, and I say us meaning people in general, are still trying to figure it out. Not everybody knows where what their um, purpose is here. Or maybe they found it and they dismissed it, but it's time to refocus, get in alignment with your purpose. Yeah, commitments. I feel like commitments are being tested and challenged right now. You know, um, your commitment to yourself, first of all, because before you can love anybody else unconditionally, you got to start with committing and loving yourself unconditionally, period. You got to know what that looks like. Part of that looks like is looking in the mirror and just finding something to love about yourself. And if you don't do it, do it. Without have you know that the love of yourself without feeling like oh I like my nose but I would like to get a no nose lift or change not that kind that's not what I mean that means taking yourself seriously look at that spirit said paying attention to the details when I was about eight I was um in my grandparents bathroom and I was looking in the mirror and I remember looking at my mirror in the mirror and I'm going hmm. I like my nose. I like my skin. I like the way my eyes are. They're a little bit like my mom. And they're a little bit like my dad, but they're mine. I remember I liked the size of my lips. Um, I felt like they were not too big and not too small. I felt like they were just right for my face. And I just remember, I don't know if anybody triggered me to go in that bathroom and look at myself, but I was giving myself self-love and I just I never forgot that I did that right and I realized even though there was I didn't like taking pictures I still don't a lot of times I don't like taking pictures I had a sense of self-love that was like you know what I'm okay with who I am what I look like I'm okay with it you know I may not like it all the time but I'm okay with me I love me and spirit is, is suggesting that you go in that mirror and you start looking at you first. It's so easy to tell somebody else, I love you. I love you so-and-so. I love you this and that. But do you ever tell yourself, I love you? Do you take two arms? And if you have two arms, not to assume. <laughs> but if you wrap your arms around yourself and say, I love me. And take that seriously. When you start doing that, everything shifts in your life. Everything you do, the, the lens that you see things and the way you do things line up differently because they line up with love. They line up with purpose. And then you get to feel a sense of satisfaction for the things that you do in life that are aligned with your purpose. That you truly love. Engineers that taught me when I was, hmm, they volunteered for a Saturday group I was in and they, they said, do what you love every day and it'll never feel like work. And I, for the life of me, didn't understand that concept because growing up, I was just told, go to college, get a job, go to college, get a job. It was just, that was the formula. Go to college, get a job, not do what you love in college. <laughs> And then get a job in what you love after college, even if that was or start a business with what you love. That was not what I was being. That wasn't the messaging that I was getting from home. But these engineers said that I never forgot it because I'm like, what does that mean? I struggle to understand. Now that I'm much older, I get it. You don't ever want to feel like this is too much. Whatever I'm doing is too much. You want to feel that I have a purpose in this world, that I am serving my purpose in this world, and I fulfill, fulfilled, excuse, I can't even say that word, fulfilled by my purpose. And that purpose helps me love myself more. So if you're having any issues or um, concerns with what is your purpose in life, start dating back to what did you love. Try different things. 
even if it's just a class and something, try different things. Where I live, there is free classes offered to residents of my particular city. Um, so look at look into free and low cost classes and things that you could consider a hobby or that you could make into a business. You know, just go look into it. Look into how you can in, you can try things to find out what your purpose is. I thought my purpose was to be a chef one day. When I got into college, I went to college for business. And then I realized I love cooking. And I wish I had gone to culinary school. But I'm already racking up the bills for regular school. So now I'm like, mm, I got an opportunity to work amongst chefs in professional kitchen that taught me the basics. And I was like, yeah, I like it. But I don't think I want my life dependent on it. So I didn't pursue it. It wasn't my purpose. I thought it was for a second, but I was like, no. I tried a lot of different things. I tried real estate. Wasn't my thing. I've owned a lot of real estate, but I didn't want to be um, a, a realtor, put it that way, right? So what is my purpose? And then I found it. I stumbled on it. And I realized this is what it is. My purpose is to help people find their purpose. And I start with children. I have a nonprofit and I work with children to help them find their purpose in that I give them different opportunities to try to test things out in science and STEM. And then they get to see, do I like this? And I don't know what that seed is going to plant, you know, in them. But later on in life, you know, I'll be, they'll be able to say, you know, hey, I remember I did this experiment in camp and or my such and such class with animation or my engineering class where we built this thing and I really think I like that. Maybe I want to be an architect one day. Maybe I want to be an astrophysicist one day. Maybe I want to go into medical um, the medical field of, of some sort. That's my purpose. And with tarot and oracle cards, I realize my purpose is to encourage people to trust themselves. You know, my readings are not for you to be reliant on me to give you guidance. I hope that I at least give you confirmations of what you already know. I feel like when you sit down for a reader, a lot of times that they pull out not necessarily what you wanted to know, but what you need to know. Why? It's because of this, the things that you know you need to focus on to improve your life. To, to, be able to live in your purpose and to trust your own intuition. This is what this is for. This is what this tool is for. This is for guidance. This is for confirmation. Trust your gut. Trust your gut what you need to do. If you have to recon if you need to reconcile with somebody, it's okay. You have permission. If it goes wrong, guess what? You can leave it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't be hard on yourself. You're here. We all here to learn lessons. Some lessons need to repeat till we learn it. Sometimes we don't get it right away. We have to give ourselves grace and grace and empathy and compassion. It's all about unconditional love for yourself, first and foremost, before you can give it out to any and any anyone in anything. You know, you have to see yourself and others. You have to see yourself in other things. You know, I started this year off saying, what if I treated myself like a plant? What if I um, watered my plants? And thought of myself. I taught my daughter that. What if I did it? <laughs> you know, she has a plant with her name on it. I don't know where I got that from. But somebody's, so, you know, give them a, a, something to pour into it. Have them name it so that they can relate to it. And then when they see it not doing good, they, they can check them, check the, um, the plant and they can check themselves. It's all about how we pour love into the world, no matter what we are doing. We could be a math wizard. Guess what? It's something about it. We love enough to do it. 
It's some type of satisfaction that we get from it. It's an alignment with who we are as an individual. It There's love in everything we do. And I'm going to tell y'all, I am a Mercury in Cancer. So first thing I think of is, do I love it? How do I feel about it? How does it make me feel? How does it make others feel when I do it? You know what I mean? So again, back to unconditional love, purpose, and alignment. That's the message today, Collective. Find your purpose. Find your true north. What are you here to learn? If you can do a zodiac chart, what's your true what's your what's your north node? If you know your north node, the opposite sign is your south node, which you've already learned in your previous life. So now it's time to get out of your south node and focus on your purpose that's in your north node. All right, family, that's your message. Please remember to like, click, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back with more, but peace.